Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Low Code Campfire. This is the episode number 81 for Friday, January 20 of 2023. Uh, today, we'll talk a little bit more about the mobile application, maybe take some questions and answers. We'll see about that. Uh, but first, let me introduce myself. I'm Dale Warner, head of support for Plant and App. And I see I'm joined by a couple of my able compatriots, Patrick and Vlad and uh, Peter. So uh, between all of us, maybe one of us will be able to answer your questions. This is an event we do on Fridays at uh, this time, and it's an opportunity to get together as a community to share techniques and challenges and experiences. And we just want to emphasize this is an all skill levels welcome. Nobody gets uh, um, everybody is welcome. So bring something new to show, uh, be ready to help with ideas and suggestions. We record all these and put them on our YouTube channel. So that's youtube.com slash plant an app. Make sure you subscribe there and uh, hit the alarm bell so you know when we post new content. We run a pretty simple agenda. We, uh, we are informal, it's a meeting format. So we'll want you to say hi, and then we'll go around the campfire in a variety of ways. We'll do first call, we'll see what contributions have been made to our community, our, our communal campfire website. We'll see about feature requests, any submitted topics, and sometimes we do uh, ghost stories and dark corners. After an hour or so, we turn off the recording. We do our afterglow segment where we can raise a virtual beer and, uh, or not as you choose and uh, just just uh, swap stories and have a good time. So engage with us, jump in, show and tell, use the chat window, uh, just, just uh, get involved. We have very few guidelines, but we ask you to be nice and uh, turn off your microphone if you've got noise in the background. You can submit questions and topics in advance and you can use that QR code to do that. It's also in our emails. And with that, I will say good morning and hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yes, good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little, little time zone, uh, a little time zone poke there. We, we, we Americans think it's all about us. It's <laughs> you know, I'm guilty of that. Anyway. You mean it's not? <laughs> uh, there are other places in the world, Matt. I've heard. <laughs> All right, we'll move right along into first call. Um, hello, Mark. Welcome. Uh, if there's anything that's uh, more important than asking Vlad questions about what he produced on uh, and presented <laughs> on the Low Code Cafe, now is your chance. Hello, Vlad. Uh, good session on Wednesday. Hello, hello. Good session on Wednesday. I think that was as uh, as uh, involved and enjoyable a session as as we put forward, with maybe the exception of the uh, uh, Texas Forty Two presentation done a long time ago. But uh, yeah, I have a question for Vlad. By the way, excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So the the question is um, what you what you discussed, talked about, and so on was putting apps, creating apps, putting apps in the app store. Obviously, yep. that's a a wonderful thing. However, what about just creating apps that are then downloadable from your site? Is that is you could do it very easily? Lower? Yeah, okay. you could do it very easily with uh, Google. I think I mentioned it for just a small amount of time in my presentation that uh, for Google, it's very easy uh, because you build an APK for uh, installable on Android and you can, of course, give it to anyone you want. And if even if it's in, internal in your company, you just have to do some training for the employees or something to understand that they have, I think they have to enable something like uh, install from other sources it's just a checkbox in your phone and that's about it uh, but for ios it's a bit uh, tougher from what i know okay i was going to say you mentioned google you generally you mean android right 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, whatever phone you want, but uh, yeah, but Google is uh, again the gatekeeper for Android. That's why I mentioned them. Uh, I didn't understand that. So they play it pretty nice with uh, giving you liberty and control over your devices and to do whatever you want. So Apple doesn't do that, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, and I'm unfortunately not very versed in app, the Apple world. So we, we struggled a bit with them, but uh, yeah. So the only thing I managed to do until now is to have the company Mac we have install the app on uh, the company iPhone <laughs> I have for testing. But it has to be connected physically by a USB cable. Mm -hmm. There might be internal, I think I've read about some internal, uh, you can submit an internal app for your own company, a private app or something like that. I think it's called a private channel or something like that, but you still have to register with them. They still have to validate you. And for Google, you don't need anything. Mm. As, uh, yes, in, in, in the portal of Apple, you need to, uh, you can have a list of maybe 100 testers or something like that. And they can then, through a special app, they can then uh, download uh, your application. So you have to install some kind of uh, bootstrap thing. And so that's, that's allows you to, uh, to get to that app. And is Peter, is that just for testing or is that for kind of everybody? Um, that is uh, that is meant for testing. And uh, they have an option that you uh, that you have a sort of a company app, but I'm not very familiar with that, Matthew. So um, they have these options that uh, that 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 you can uh, develop an app that's only internal. But the, the, the exact stuff, I don't know. Okay. The reason for my asking is, is that I'm, uh, I've developed a couple of mobile first websites that are for, you know, internal corporate kind of sales channel use and going through the rigmarole of publishing, publishing this ultimately to the app store, particularly it sounds like the Apple store, um, might be more um, more hassle than it's worth. So if there was an easier way to make the app available just by download from one of my sites, then that would be advantageous. And, you know, it enables you get to get quickly to a relatively small audience that would like to have an app that Apple won't allow anything like that. Everything has to come through the App Store. The other option you've got, I think they have a beta channel, so you can allow people to sign up as beta testers. So yes, that's, that's what way. I meant, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. it's, okay, so that yeah. was the same thing. Yeah, and the same thing is that. Yeah. What, what I've seen some companies do, um, I, uh, one example of this was a, a company that offered, they uh, have software for hosting conferences, and you could get your conference app. And actually what they have in the app store is a shell app that you, log, that you download and put on your phone. And then you log in, to that, um, log in to that app. And then you get the conference that you're signed up for and not any of the other conferences. So a route like that where you had a, a, you know, a, a, plain, a plain holding app that yep. Um, and then once you've logged in, you you get your particularly your particular corporate app or, or whatever. Um, the the um, SharePoint or the, the the SharePoint app and the Power Apps app from Microsoft are very similar as well. They're just a they're just a wrapper, and it uses mm -hmm. you you authenticate and go through and get it uh, get it that way. Um, I'm not sure that. Apple would allow a small independent developer to do that. Uh, they do seem to have different rules depending on how important you are. Or mm. Interpret the rules differently depending on how important you are. So that might be that might be an imp impediment. But that there's 
that's another way that you can get around it. But everything, everything has to come through the App Store for Apple. Hmm. It's in that same vein. If you remember when we were doing Adalo, Adalo had a uh, an app called Test Flight, and I think it was the same thing, a wrapper. So you installed Test Flight, and then you can uh, you chose your credentials within Adalo, which then presented your app. It's uh, um, I, I think it's we're saying you know there are several examples of saying the same thing. You got to abide by Apple's rules. I've looked it up, and there are um, there is a developer enterprise program if you have an enterprise, and you want to distribute private apps. But again, it costs like three hundred dollars per year, and you still have to submit to the review process, and all kinds of stuff like that. And also, there is a business to business apps program, but again, it's not available in every country. And yeah, so mostly they are scared about losing that thirty percent revenue. <laughs> That's one of the reasons they do this. And, That's a uh, big yeah. chunk of change. No, no, it's to make sure people get a very secure and curated experience. It's nothing to do with the money. It's it's all yeah. for the good of the customer. Dale, please edit me out. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we don't have to be worried about editing you out. We're going to post this on YouTube, and uh, YouTube will probably edit us, edit us out or promote us. I don't know, since it's a Google property. Um, yeah, we've we've had one um, YouTube that got rejected for I don't know. Somebody mentioned something, and it ended up getting. <laughs> you, they 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 listen to what you say, and they keep you from saying it. So anyway. Good morning, well, Jen. I see you came in a little bit after we said the hellos. Um, the the notion, though, of having a Hi. Uh, the notion of having a shell app in in my context could be very valuable because the the overall program that um, the, the organization I'm working with has will essentially take iterations of the site that I'm developing and then um, resell it to multiple companies. So in each company, each organization would have their own site. Therefore, if I could then have one shell app, back to Jim's uh, example of that conferencing, if I have one shell app that when you log in, you just go to your uh, either site or portal. I don't know, obviously, how that would work. That would be very good. But the scale of the individual numbers probably wouldn't warrant the overhead associated with creating an actual full-on app. You know, talking like a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand users, depending. You you have like a white label website. I can, yes, and I would certainly, in other words, I'd, I'd have to back into what I need, start at the end point with the uh, app, what those requirements are, and then back into what I need to do to make that happen on the site end of things, if, if that makes sense. The only thing is that, like I mentioned in the presentation, is that if you do a simple web view, just like a wrapper, they will reject it, unfortunately, if you don't use any native uh, phone features. Mm. I I was wondering if, you know, that it might be one approach for Planted App to have, you know, that, that there is a, a generic Planted App app that um, you could then log into any, certainly any of the, the hosted portals. And it comes with a range of capabilities which are turned off by default but they're there so you know those those native capabilities are there and um, then when someone logs in they end up on their particular their particular instance in the plant app universe i'm not sure how practical that is but it would certainly save the problem well it would would be that people who are operating with a hosted a planted app hosted solution and operating it at quite a, a small level would be able to get into mobile apps without having to go through all of this uh, pain themselves yeah yeah it sounds like there's 
I mean, we could lower the bar, um, make, make it easy. And, you know, for if it, the $300 a year, if it's just uh, something that gets incorporated into the hosting fee to make it worth our while to do, that, that's a good, I think it's a good idea. I don't know whether it's possible. I think it's a good idea. It's, it's not the money. It's not the money. It's the effort and technical requirements. You know, that's it. Money is 300 bucks is a throwaway. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose that's why um, Tony used that, um, that service to get his um, uh, right. practice app up. So you just sub because that's another option is to subcontract the pain to someone else. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so one of the things we mentioned on Wednesday was the possibility that uh, Vlad would, would walk us through some of this or go a little bit deeper. Is that something you're prepared to do, Vlad? We see we haven't prepared anything here today particularly. Well, uh, not much more than I have uh, shown you guys. Okay. But I was wondering if anybody tried the open source uh, code we gave. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, it's not on, yet. It's on, on the to-do list. Any chance you could give us a little bit of help getting it set up right? Yep. I could. Yeah, maybe a little demo on how to, uh, where to put the files and how to get it started. Are you on, uh, it depends on the platform you are. Uh well, I'm on a Windows computer. I have access to Visual Studio. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need to have, um, uh, I recommend and they recommend to Visual Studio Code. Okay. The open source one. Um, and then you just need to install the Flutter extension, which will also install automatically the Dart extension, which is the language they're using, the programming language. And with those two, most of the stuff is already there. You just need to follow that getting started and uh, it will walk you through installing the SDK. So I followed it to the letter and everything worked perfectly. Okay, I, I'm solidly in the low code category. Um, when you say install Flutter, um, I, I don't know where to begin with that. I don't know if anybody else wants to see that or not. Maybe it's just me. I'd love to do it. Would you be able to show your, your VS code? Setup? Yes, of course. I'm trying to do it right now. I have multiple monitors and I hope I'm going to share the right one. Here you go. Can you see the browser? Yep. Yes. Okay, so uh, this is the link I've provided in um, in the open source readme file, if you noticed. It takes you here and you will press on Windows and then you will have to download this package, this uh, zip archive. I think now Windows comes even with uh, unzipping by default, right? You don't yeah. need any special programs anymore. You just need to extract it somewhere, wherever you want. Even you can do their path if you feel uh, if you feel like doing it. So, uh, and this is the harder part, the part for uh, somebody who is not really a developer. So, what they want from you here in the update your path portion is to make Flutter available as a let's say command line program. So you're going to transform this, uh, this zip, this folder you're going to create called Flutter. This is going to be the source of the program. You will use Flutter for different commands. And maybe you're familiar with CMD, the command line or PowerShell from Windows, Mark? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so basically what you're doing in those first steps is to enable flutter the keyword flutter to work right 
and then for example you have a command called doctor which will uh, tell you if you have set up right or not so i hope if i run it everything is gonna be all right so i remember yeah. in, in in dos there was a path command and so what you're saying is that that sort c source flutter has to be part of your path yeah exactly it's called path and that's what they want you to do here to update your path to make it as available and uh, edit in the search bar you need to write edit env which i think comes from environment edit the system environment variables or i think they mentioned here for your account there might be two options let's check it out yeah for your account and then i guess here you can uh, point to that uh, flutter folder and inside that flutter folder you will uh, unzip it there will be a bin folder and you need to point uh, the path variable to flutter slash bin i think i have it somewhere around here path is in your list there yeah i have it here i put an sdk folder backslash flutter backslash bin and i i don't remember we'll see later in the tutorial i might have done this myself or flutter might have done this with the dart sdk themselves we'll see what they write later in the tutorial And then you will have to, by the way, you will also need to install Android Studio. So we are on Windows. Mark, I guess you will uh, probably do Android stuff, right? In the beginning. Well, I would At prefer least. iPhone, but um, I can do well, it. I'm going to want to do it. So. You need to do it. <laughs> you need to go back a step and then choose Mac OS. Because you need to be on a Mac if you want to do iPhone stuff. Candy. There's um, unfortunately, it's there's no way around it, and and you actually have to be on a Mac, not yeah, yeah, you have to be on a Mac, and I had many headaches with the Mac setup myself because I'm not a Mac Mac user, uh, but I managed. I mean, setting up the path was a bit of a pain. None of the tutorials I found really worked for me, and yeah, I had to do all kinds of things. But you can proceed with the uh, Android version. That's great. Uh, so after you set this up, is it? Do you have any questions about the path variable? Uh, no, I saw what you did. I appreciate that. Good. So if you run those uh, commands like where, Flutter, Dart, and stuff, they should probably list you your paths, and you probably did it right if you did it. The next step is to run uh, like I ran before, flat Flutter Doctor, and it will tell you about uh, if you have the Android SDK or not, and where to download it from. Um, they also recommend, and I recommend too, to download Android Studio. Right? You need, you kind of need it because they will have uh, many things already done. Um, they it, it will also install a lot of things behind the scenes, a lot of frameworks and stuff and tools. Mm -hmm. You will need to build your app. And one of the most important things is um, an Android emulator. If you don't have an Android device, this Android emulator is pretty good. Unfortunately, it's not pretty good for doing camera stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it to work, so I, I connected to my physical device. But uh, if you have an Android, that would be great. Otherwise, you can just uh, just not use the mobile scanning we provided there, the QR code scanning. Just try the web view part with uh, your DNN instance. So yeah, like I said, install Android Studio, set up your Android device if you have one, or otherwise set up the Android emulator. So basically, 
let me see if I uh, I can find. By the way, you also need to enable virtual machine acceleration on your machine. This is about uh, doing BIO settings for Windows. Um, if you don't have it already, if you're not lucky, you might need to enable uh, virtualization on your processor. Because otherwise it cannot uh, start the emulator with the virtual machine on it. That will simulate an Android device if you don't have one. Um, then you have to also um, accept the Android licenses. There is a small unfortunate thing with Flutter is that it kind of needs to talk with Google permanently while you use it and build stuff. They will send some telemetry and they will download some things in the back uh, in the background. And then of course it's the Visual Studio Code, uh, the code stuff. I uh, I think you guys asked me before about showing it to you. I'm just want to open the open source app. Okay. So there you have it. The extensions I was telling you about you just need to go here and search extensions in the marketplace and just write Flutter, which will start the one from Dart code. And when you install this one, it will automatically install the, the Dart one too for the programming language. And then you're good to go. What I do uh, is usually I connect my uh, Android device directly through a USB cable and I'm gonna do it right now to show you what happens. On Android, you need to connect, you need to go into your phone settings and um, enable USB debugging, which I think uh, there's a different way for every phone provider. So if it's Samsung, if it's Google Pixel, if it's whatever you use, I personally use a Xiaomi phone. Um, and um, I had to do some different steps than a Samsung, for example. After you have USB debugging enabled on your mobile device, you will start to see it um, in Visual Studio Code directly. I have it here on the bottom right. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Does this drop down render for you? Yes. Yeah, so this M2007 something is my personal Android phone. But otherwise, because I have installed Android um, Studio, which installed the mobile emulator before, I, I also have access to this one. The Pixel 3a is actually their emulator from Android Studio. Okay. And I, I think I need to have Android Studio opened in the background for this to work. So when I select the phone, I just run and debug it. Okay, builders exist in your project. I think it's because I don't have um, the packages, the third party packages. And I think this is, this is their NPM install. Pub is the is their npm from the JavaScript world. So pub is the repository for first party and third party packages. I'm sorry. What is MDM? NPM, the node package module we use in uh, the JavaScript world, where you take third third, pack, third party packages from open source projects. So in JavaScript we have npm. Here in the Flutter world, they have pub. There's something similar in that in um, Visual Studio as well, isn't there? A way of getting uh, for C sharp, it's called Nugget or something. That's what the Microsoft oh, yeah. calls. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nugget, yeah. Okay, so when you press the play button, it builds the um, the app. It's using Gradle by uh, in the background, which I think uh, is also used for Java because Android is Java world.
and here I think I've literally opened the open source one, so we don't have a URL. URL, but let's let's keep building it. After the first time, it's way easier, but uh, this is the first time I'm doing it today, so it needs to cache many things. Um, by the way, you have in Flutter you have uh, two important folders. One is iOS and one is Android, depends on what you're working on. And um, I had to do a few settings that of course I've provided already here in uh, build gradle, let me check. Yeah, most of the things here came from them, from, uh, from the auto-generated app you start with. So you basically, you just have a command of a new app in Flutter and they do many, many things. But I had to, to target the um, Android SDK version I want. So Android SDK features like 30, 33, uh, they refer to the um, Android version you want to support. So I had to do it. Um, but another important part, let me find it. the android manifest so this is the file if you are an android developer you would probably know what the, this is this is the manifest of your app this is where i had to put um let's see if it, yeah this is where i had to put two permissions when i started building so one is for internet uh android apps by default don't come with the internet permission so i got uh, <laughs> an access denied error at the beginning or something like that and also I had to add the camera permission. So this uh, this camera permission, I also had to add it for iOS too, but uh, fortunately iOS apps have, um, have permission for the internet by default. But for iOS, I don't really remember where I had to do it, maybe here. Oh yeah, I got it, it's a P list. So I had to, do the NS camera usage description and camera permission is required for barcode scanning. This is something I wrote. I have to explain to Apple why I'm requesting those. So the key is the thing that you're after and those are prescribed. Yeah, yeah. And, and the string is, is, the ex is your explanation. Yeah, yeah. So this, those are the things I had to do. And otherwise this pub spec, YAML file is uh, again in the JavaScript world. I think it's called the package.json in the JavaScript world where you put the um, third party dependencies you have. In this world, it's a YAML file. And here, here are all the, the third party dependencies. This is Flutter in app web view, is the one we use for the web view. Uh, and then <clears throat> this web view needed the URL launcher package also. I, I followed, I just followed their uh, default tutorial in the in-app web view uh, documentation website. And barcode scan too. I think this is the third one I have tried where, uh, and this is the one I, uh, I actually managed to make work. I used to have something called mobile scanning or scanner that everybody was happy about, but you could scan only once. <laughs> I don't know why they were happy with it. You could scan it only once and then it, it lost permission to access the camera or something like that. And uh, there were GitHub issues about it and nobody was answering. So I had to change it to barcode scan too. So when you do that command that I did earlier, flutter pub get, it gets into this list of packages and installs them locally in your folder here, somewhere around here and then you can build the app. And yeah, because we don't have a URL, if you look into my camera, I have a blank screen, a white screen. If we put a URL there, so we can go again with uh, Dale's ID tag app. By the way, Android by default doesn't um, accept HTTP. It really loves HTTPS. Uh, I didn't test HTTP on uh, on 
Apple iOS, but I think uh, it might be the same. The beautiful thing about um, about Flutter is that it has hot reload, so you don't have to build again. You just need to refresh. And if you look at my screen, uh, at my camera again, here is you can see the plant and app login screen for for the app. Sir, so are you saying that just by putting the right URL in there now? You your can app... put any URL you want here, actually. But right. it's better to be your URL, <laughs> not other people's URL. <laughs> That's, by the way, something they, they specifically write in their documentation. Please don't submit web view apps of other people's websites. <laughs> so uh, if you had chosen a diff the, the emulator, for example, instead of your phone, then you, we'd see this on the screen? Yeah, way. actually, I can. Uh, what I did, the cool stuff about uh, Windows and Android, but I think it also works between Mac and Android, but I didn't try it, is that you have... Uh, and I recommend it. I think you have Chrome devices or inspect. Yeah, here you have, uh, and I can put it in the chat. Maybe it's better. I hope I can put it in the chat. I'm not very familiar with Zoom. Yeah, I think I found it. Yeah, it's called Chrome inspect devices. I hope you received it in the chat. Mm -hmm. Because it's a web view app, it's basically a Chrome browser inside the Flutter app. That's what web view is actually. Because it's a Chrome browser, we can inspect it with the Chrome DevTools. And now you can actually see my physical phone screen by just inspecting the web, web view. This is how I did the presentation on, uh, on Wednesday. But what Dale said was, uh, was uh, a good choice too. But, I, but of course, through the emulator, I couldn't have shown you the mobile scanning part of barcodes. So this is how I did the presentation by going to this URL, but it only works on Google Chrome, by the way. Makes sense. And uh, the, the most impressive part for me is, I know the app is simple. It's very simple. It's just uh, a web view and uh, some JavaScript channel to communicate with the web view and that mobile QR code scanning things. But I'm still amazed that uh, it worked flawlessly on Apple, on iOS in the first try. You know, I didn't have to do absolutely anything. It just worked. No bugs, no nothing. But again, I, like I said, it was a simple app, but I still didn't have too high of expectations, you know. That's great. Uh, didn't you also have to get that app in, into the App Store? We didn't do it. We are in the progress, actually. We're uh, we're working on it. For us, uh, we we registered our company, Plant an App, as an Apple developer and a Google Play developer, and I think next week we will submit the the app. It was a bit of a hassle with uh, countries. We have a company in the USA. We have a company in Romania, and yeah, if you are in that situation, they don't really play nice. <laughs> But we managed to, to do it through a few emails, a few days of emails back and forth. Is there um, a, a service or a, a source of any ongoing cost that's associated with hosting an app? Meaning if you go through other processes, you can get an app um, and there's always a monthly fee to make that work. So the way you're doing it, it appears that that wouldn't be the case. Is that right? The cost is related to plant, your plant and app subscription, basically, because plant and app is the back end. Having an app on theirs, on Apple Store and the Google Play Store is like your front end, you know? So you have to pay the back end. Well, you have to pay to continue to be a developer, probably. Even yeah, once a year, a, one mm -hmm. one hundred dollars once a year. So for Apple, yeah, nothing. Yeah. And for for, Android, for Google, it's, uh, it's a one time uh, twenty yeah, five yeah, something. One, yeah. Yeah, one time. I'm sorry. Okay. What's the one time? 
for Google. It's only one time, but for Apple, you have to pay 100 bucks every year if you're a normal developer or 300 if you're that enterprise things we were talking about earlier. Yep. So now we have a camera we can scan. So what is then needed uh, when I, for instance, want to do something else? I have to do something in Flutter to enable, for instance, to, I want to get files. From my, well, uh, uh, the, the thing I didn't, I forgot to mention on Wednesday is that mm -hmm. we also worked on our uh, file upload uh, field to to make it work. Mm -hmm. And uh, it works to submit files to action form with the file upload field. It uh, opens the native file upload or something and it will it allows you to take a picture directly and upload it or uh, submit a file from your android or ios device it just works so i had to actually research which one so i uh, i went through a few third party packages of doing web view because uh, the flutter guys have a, an official web view uh, web um, package you can download mm -hmm. But uh, people have been complaining for many years and unfortunately they didn't work in it. They just released a, another major version without file upload support. So yeah, it's a bit weird that they do this. So I had to research all the third party web view packages we had until I found this one that just works. And so that just works. That means there is a a communication between the Flutter, the Flutter site, and the Plant and App backend. So then plant you call some... the Plant and App front end, actually. Yeah, the Plant and App front end. Okay, yeah, the Plant and App front end. You're right. So you have a, J a JavaScript call in the front end. Now you they do scan. it. Uh, they do. They, oh yeah, for the scanning, yeah. But uh, for the uploading part, they do it uh, themselves. I didn't do anything for that to work. You just press the file upload button. <laughs> okay, you you press the file upload button for uh, on the uh, in action form. Yeah, and then it gets some file from your device. Yep. Okay. That's actually what what works now also. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Without an app, uh, without a wrapper, so without a web view, you can also do that in the browser. I mean. Yeah, yeah. So let me see if I can show something like that. I've just added. Come on, please work. Please work with me. Okay. So here I just added another file upload field. Let's see if it renders. Oh, I'm for yeah, it doesn't render because now it got into the native phone uh, file upload stuff, the menu that comes, the off canvas that comes from the bottom. So of course it doesn't show on this inspector because it's out of the browser. It's out of the web view. Mm. But uh, I hope you can see something on the bottom of my screen and my camera. <laughs> okay, yes, we see. This is the folder and camera and stuff like that. So if I take a picture of myself or a video, apparently I took a video. <laughs> you can see a video here, right? This is my <laughs> beautiful face. And you can submit it or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just works. It was a requirement for the app when we built it. How Any big uh, how big a lift is it to get the fingerprint recognition working? In particular, I'm thinking about replacing like on your banking apps, replacing, you know, your authentication with that. That there is a third party official. It's actually a first party package for that, from what I can see. So you have the choice of face 
fing and fingerprint. Nice. Yeah. Because that, you know, one of the, as you well know, one of the biggest issues with users is getting logins. And also the form factor on many phones when you're putting in, you know, you've got the keyboard replacing part of the screen. It can get difficult to put in a moderately complex password sometimes. So fingerprints from that perspective are home run. So the so what from what I can see, the flutter part is easy. Just add um, a small uh, package. But I think we have to to get. So for now, the the easiest path for us was to do the login inside the web view. As you have seen, it's our template of logging in. So it happens in the web view, and um, it supports saving cookies and stuff like that. So we still have the normal DNN way, just like on your local browser. Um, but the thing is, probably for this to work, is to actually do that uh, JWT authentication DNN supports. So it will be a bigger lift than uh, anything else for, from now. So you would have to move the authentication away from the, from the web view and you would have to implement the authentication uh, inside Flutter directly and communicate with DNN through JWT. Let's say it's a medium lift. <laughs> I think as long as it could use the same user, the users and, and credentials that are already in DNN, that would be a huge, a huge, a huge um, benefit for uh, for making this really usable. So, Vlad, um, looking at all the stuff that you've shown us today, how much of that is going to be packaged inside Plant and App? Uh, how much is going to come with um, generated by Plant and App or something like that? I didn't really get the question. Yeah. Well, maybe if we flip that around and say, how much of this would we need to do ourselves in the future when this gets incorporated in, into Plant and App? Can we develop an app similar to the way we develop a new form or a new page with a list and a form on it? Or do we still need to have uh, Visual Studio open and use that? Well, Peter may correct me, but uh, I think our vision is to actually provide for the customers an APK for Android. And I think Peter actually had it in his presentation, if I remember correctly. Before my yes, presentation. it was the uh, it was the idea that uh, that we provide you a pipeline, but that's uh, and then of course you depend on the the features we make available. So now there is a feature, uh, the scanning feature that works now, uh, but there is no authentication and there is no notifications yet available. So that requires both on the Flutter side and on the plant and app side, some work. And uh, what we, what the plan is to provide you with a pipeline in which you can say, well, I want this URL linked to my app. And then you have to fill in a form, I would, I would guess, with the name of the app and uh, the URL of the app and maybe some other information, which well, we don't know yet what it is, but it's, it should be a simple form with information about the app. And that will get to the pipeline and the pipeline will generate just like uh, that's a sort of a compile. Uh, compile and uh, those two files, one for Android and one for uh, iOS. And then you have to get that file into your personal account in the store. So you have to provide uh, stuff like uh, images for logo, for screenshots, and they are pretty strict about that. Uh, so 
the dimensions must uh, be 100% okay and and stuff like that and you have to fill in some legal stuff and target uh, your app uh, so you have to do a lot inside the app store to get your app uh, accepted and of some course, things it's... maybe we can automate peter i don't know i'm not very familiar but i think you can bundle the images and maybe we can automate it we can you can bundle the images in the apk and the ipa files maybe i'm not sure i'm not sure so but there will still be some uh, parts you need to do in yes. the foreseeable future yourself yeah but not visual studio not the visual, the visual studio, studio part. part that is well, you uh, might have figured it out that's where i was going with that question mm -hmm. what you just described peter was very low code it was very much like our experience working with plant and app now and uh, mm -hmm. that quite frankly that's very exciting to me um the things that uh, vlad showed in visual studio although i'm familiar with the screens that i'm looking at i wouldn't have known what to do at any time so on my own so packaging it the way you just described sounds very enticing it sounds like um a, a regular low code thing for us to do to all of a sudden have an app if we you know provide the images and the URLs and things like that. Yes, that's, uh, you might be right, but uh, I think that there's still quite, uh, quite some work to get everything right inside both the iOS and the Android app store. That is, uh, that's not for the faint of heart, let me put it that way. I did that for one client at one time and it took me uh, well, more in the order of days than in an order of hours. And that's, of course, the first time you do that. And the second time it will be much better. But you usually do that not so many times, Mark. So uh, it, it, uh, yeah, it's, it requires uh, some time. And, uh, and if it does not get accepted, then you're, yeah, you're worse off i would say so then you must explain why this app is so uh so needed for your for the community as a whole and and stuff like that so it's uh, yeah the technical part we solve for you but that's not mean that the problem is solved well jumping through the hoops to satisfy apple or or google somehow is less intimidating to me than jumping in and doing all that visual studio mm. stuff that i just saw yes maybe <laughs> maybe i think i think the big difference is that with the with the programming stuff if you get the if you get the right letters in the right order you know it will work with exactly. apple and google mm, it's it's more of a dark art i think it, it, it depends how your brain works. Sometimes that's more more appealing. The uh, dealing with um, disembodied people at the end of a chat line <laughs> might be more your thing than wrestling with code. But I think we can uh, we can help Mark. Like uh, if you get stuck anywhere, if you attempt to do the setup I've shown, and you get stuck, I think we can uh, we can help. Maybe the community forum, Dale, or where can they post questions uh, about the open source app absolutely i think that would be a, a, as good a spot to start we, we watch that uh continually anyway so we'll um if something comes that way since it's outside of my wheelhouse i will tap vlad on the shoulder and ask for an assist go ahead i'm open to help you guys if you need any help where if you get stuck with the setup with the window setup the mac setup if you try to do that open source very generous. Thank you, Vlad. Yeah. Uh, Just I had a couple of questions. Right, go ahead. Uh, one, did you say that in your development you were able to use the one code set to generate the iOS so you could build it targeting Android and then later on with a few settings just move it to iOS without anything else? Is that? Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, that's what I did. I started with Android, I tested everything, I, you know, did the whole thing, the mobile scanning, implemented the code in action form, and afterwards at the end, I just tried iOS and it worked with just that permission thing I saw you, I, I shown you yes, um, a few minutes earlier, the camera permission, that's the only thing I had to add for, for the Apple part. 
and it just worked. Great. And then in the in the Android world, any Android device that you're targeting would work. So if you've got a tablet or a, a phone or something like that, and you know, yeah, I, I mentioned the, it a bit. The look and that, feel might be different. Yeah, the, that uh, thing called target SDK version. You need to write your own target SDK. You need to look on Google and see what those numbers mean. So they have uh, target SDK 30 means Android 10 or something like that, you know? So you can target any device you want because some features, so for example, uh, those third party packages I'm using, the mobile scanning one required in their documentation, they were mentioning something about the minimum uh, Android version you could target. So you just need to know what you're building and look on that documentation and see what you need to target, the minimum versions. Thank you. So by that you mean then with the, by setting those ID numbers for the targets, you then can target um, multiple levels of support within Android, also multiple device types. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But I didn't go that far. I actually put the minimum, the minimum Android version. I could go as far, as low as I could go to still have QR code scanning work and the web view to work. Because there was no reason to, you know, go higher and restrict some people. Right. Now, on just out of curiosity, do you know on install, is there a check process to make sure um, that if you don't have that level, it will flag you, warn you, won't allow you to install it? Do you know off the top of your head? Um, uh, yeah, for example, on the Google Play Store, I think it will just, when you try to download it and not install it, when you try to download it, it will just tell you that, I'm sorry, we cannot install your phone is out of date or something like that. It requires a higher level of Android or something. I, it happened to me personally when I tried to download an app. Okay. Thank so you. I guess yeah. it's, it's a mechanism like that. And I think in the store, it will not even uh, show it to you. On search, yeah, you have to go to the URL directly if you know it by heart or something. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way you could, could actually reach it. Yeah, I think Peter is right. You can't even find it by searching. But I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not very familiar with the Apple store. So if anybody knows how that works. <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's the same. Uh, I think even if you've downloaded an APK and you've set up your phone so you can sideload APKs, when it goes through the the install process, um, it oh, I think you're right. There. I think I think I did a mistake when I was building it and I set it too high to the latest or something like that, and it just uh, installed it on my phone, but it it gave me an error or something like this app cannot run on your device or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so the, so the idea I think is to always pick the lowest the lowest level you can get away with, so you get the best coverage on on phones. Um, have, you haven't tried it installing it on a Chromebook on a Chromebook, have you? Yeah, I don't have one at hand, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> it, you, not quite as rare as Android tablets, but not far off. No, I was just just curious. That might be something I can try. You you can actually if you watch the getting start if you go through the getting started. Uh, tutorial with Flutter, you can actually develop on Chrome OS. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that brought me to that made me think of another another question. Uh, when you were installing all of the all of those dependencies and those programs, that was all um, native on the on your machine, wasn't it? You weren't you you weren't installing it into a VM or or anything like that. It's just part of your operating system. Uh working on the flutter app yeah yeah but uh, when i did if you're asking about the that command flutter pub get where it downloaded the dependencies before i managed to build it yeah it downloads it uh, right in the folder where you put uh, yeah. where you put your open source repository where you unzipped what we provided on wednesday it's just that uh, 
over the years I've, I've, I've had problems where I've done a lot of different things on a machine and you can end up with conflicts. So I try, always try and do the development in a VM or in, in a container containerized environment so that they, they don't get in the way of each other. Um, so I was just wondering, it looked as if yeah. you were installing it. Yeah, yeah, but you can you can always use a Docker or something like that and just do it there. Yeah. Tell you what, great discussion, and it's been an hour, so I am going to uh, call the campfire. Uh, we'll we'll stop the recording. We'll move right into Afterglow. Don't mean to put a damper on the conversation, but we like to keep these to an hour, so. Uh, everyone, thanks for joining, and uh, we will have another episode next week, the same hour. Thanks again. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you.